Hi, I'm Laurie Howes. I've been a professor of medicine for over 40 years now, uh, specialising in cardiology and in particular cardiovascular risk factor management and cardiovascular pharmacology. I have over 230 peer-reviewed manuscripts published in that area of clinical pharmacology, particularly cardiovascular pharmacology. I have a particular interest in the development of uh, a compound called uh, beta-hydroxycyclodextrin. Now, there are many cyclodextrins out there, so I think it's important to know that this is one member of a large class that we're specifically looking at because it has very remarkable results from uh, animal models of, of atheroma and some very interesting um, observational data from people who have received it who have got atheroma dis disease. Beta-hydroxycyclodextrin is marketed in Australia and in the USA under the trade name of Cavidex. I use the word cyclodextrin, but for every time I say that, you can quite easily implant the word Cavidex because most of the data has come from observations of people who have been placed on uh, cyclodextrin therapy. I think it's very important to uh, emphasise that there is this one specific kind that's been shown to reverse uh, atheroma, to reduce plaque size in at least three animal models. The last couple of years, I've been very proactive in trying to generate research into this remarkable compound and to increase our experience in the use of uh, cyclodextrin to, uh, to treat people with ischemic heart disease. There appears to be two major and separate effects of cyclodextrin in, um, in ischemic heart disease. And there's a, an immediate one which comes from the direct pharmacological effects of cyclodextrin, which um, has been well documented in animal studies and in human studies um, using bench type te techniques. The second interesting and perhaps most important feature of this compound is that it seems to be able to reduce the size of plaques. In other words, cause regression of atheromatous plaques in patients with ischemic heart disease. So we get an additional effect after the uh, resolution of symptoms, which we can uh, demonstrate quite well. Cyclodextrin has uh, therefore a bimodal function. One which is short term, improving uh, vascular inflammation, reducing the symptoms of angina, but in the longer term, it holds the promise of causing regression of plaque, something that we've been un unable to achieve uh, with any other form of medical treatment thus far. The potential importance of cyclodextrin can't be underscored enough. Cyclodextrin in the form of Cavidex at this stage has more safety data and more knowledge about the pharmacology than what we knew about the statins when they were first introduced. I think that there's a potential for this treatment to be even more important and have a greater impact than what statins have. And certainly it's the greatest advance that we have had in cardiovascular pharmacology for the treatment of atheromatous plaques since the statins came on the scene. The development of this um, treatment has largely been done by one of my ex-patients, Kyle Hodges, who was not a fantastic uh, role model in terms of how a person should look after their health and reduce the risk of, of heart disease. But to his credit, he has made significant progress in uh, getting people, particularly in the United States, to have experience with this compound, 
most of whom have had very substantial uh, demonstrated beneficial effects. At the moment, Cavidex has been given primarily to people with symptomatic heart disease for whom there is little else to offer in terms of revascularization. But it has the potential to be used, like statins, and probably in combination with statins, to cause regression of the disease, to make things get better from a mechanical point of view. This has got enormous implications uh, in terms of uh, not only improving patients' lives and symptoms, but also to reduce demand on revascularization procedures, uh, such as the implanting of stents um, and maybe even coronary artery disease. To put it into perspective, we have a potential treatment which may reverse coronary artery disease. Coronary artery disease is still the number one killer worldwide. And if we can make an impact using a medical treatment rather than surgical interventions, which have their own limitations, this would make a huge, huge impact um, on uh, public health. I've been involved in cardiovascular research and the management of patients with ischemic heart disease for a long, long time. I have a, a, a substantial track record in research myself um, and was uh, entered into Who's Who in the World in 1998 for my contributions to medicine and uh, also in a, a booklet called Marquis Great Minds of the 21st Century. There is still a lot that we don't know about cyclodextrin and uh, we hope to be able to fill in the gaps in the future with some more targeted, uh, sophisticated research, both at a laboratory and a clinical level. It is very important that we press forward with getting more experience in humans, clinical trial data, because the unique situation that cyclodextrin is in is that it won't make a lot of money for any particular person or company because there's nothing readily patentable. It's a compound that we've been using uh, to solubilise drugs in very high concentrations, large amounts, for over 30 years. So it's very important that this unique opportunity does not slip away from us because people can't see the dollar at the end of the day. Cyclodextrin and the cyclodextrin family are really just a form of starch that uh, is a natural byproduct of metabolism in humans. So we're talking about something which is a natural uh, compound which has an enormous amount of safety data behind it and it's very, very non-toxic. It can be given in doses up to 20, 30 grams a day and often is when it's used to solubilise drugs like antifungals. So there's no question about the safety. We need further information though on the extent of its benefit in humans because the, the promise that it holds I think is really quite unique.